Lagos, Nigeria's biggest city, is still open for business. But what it needs is more efficient infrastructure. This was the message that the state government gave to the audience of potential stakeholders at the Lagos State Infrastructure Forum. Building on the success of a similar forum held in London last year, the government used the opportunity to engage its own private sector, presenting the diverse business opportunities available as Lagos develops its infrastructure. Governor Fashalo was at pains to point out what had been achieved so far and reaffirm his commitment to transforming Lagos into one of the world's premium destinations for business and leisure. He also acknowledged that the projects have been successful because of their partnerships with the private sector. Let me at the onset emphasize the fact that we did not choose to be a mega city. It is a status that we have acquired as a result of urbanization and the increasing movement of people from diverse places into our city state. Lagos State has therefore embraced the task of transforming Lagos into Africa's model mega city and indeed the state of our dreams. Our challenges of administering the mega city because of this classification has brought consequences which are a mixture of challenges and opportunities. Many of these schemes are structured as public-private partnerships based on our faith in private capital and entrepreneurial management, working in concert with a focused and strategic public sector to deliver first-class services to our people. He also announced the development of detailed plans for rehabilitation and expansion projects like a power source for the state and the reconstruction of at least 100 roads. The governor asked the audience of local and international groups to help him realize the dream of a model mega city by contributing their resources. Perhaps the biggest challenge of administering mega cities, the challenge of funding and sustaining the upgrading of infrastructure, which is the subject of this forum. The state government has conceived this forum as an opportunity to showcase international and domestic investors as well as infrastructure companies, our policy trusts, planning priorities, and the investment environment. And to also present specific infrastructure projects and investment opportunities in Lagos State. Louis Tay, a professional structural engineer from Singapore, a country that has had similar problems as Lagos, but managed to transform itself into one of the world's modern mega cities, showcased systems that his government had adopted like taking control of land and housing to construct affordable accommodation for all its citizens. It's a very small island, 707 square kilometers. Yet we have 5 million people on this island and it's still growing. And that 5 million people stay on land that occupies only 19% of the footprint of Singapore that you see here. Now, how have we been able to do it? Through very, very careful planning. And housing. Housing is strongly featured here because without putting a roof over every citizen's head, you do not have political stability to push your development agenda forward. This is something that must be addressed. And this is what Singapore has done very, very well. Presenting their own megacity master plan, Members of the Lagos State Executive Council laid out the various infrastructural investment and partnership options that were available, assuring them of favorable legal and regulatory frameworks and financial policies. What we're doing now is to put an enduring plan in position. From those plans is what we are now trying to achieve what some of the issues that they have uh, achieved in Singapore. But we're achieving them more rapidly than they did over the period of uh, 40 years. Most of our plans are being put in place and most of the actions we're taking are emanating from the plan. But we're also making available an opportunity to the private sector to be able to queue in onto some of our plans to take a bit of the portion. Interface with private sector on the public-private partnership initiative. Um, this initiative started in 2007 when we hosted the first conference of public-private partnership. We are now gone partnering with Common Business Council to focus on specific projects and opportunities where we can showcase our plans 
showcase the project, the projects and opportunities, and begin to digest them, articulate them with a broad financial strategy. We've been working on um, the public-private um, partnership uh, bill. We've presented it to the House of uh, Assembly as an executive bill. It's made good progress, and we're hoping that um, in the next couple of months that bill will come out. That bill is what enables the Office of PPP to be able to have a very sector-wide um, approach to PPPs with um, the private sector in Lagos State. We are also um, putting in place a public procurement law which allows us to insist that all these projects are dealt with in a transparent and open and competitive manner. It's not news that China is interested in investment in Africa. Rong Yansong, commercial councillor of the People's Republic of China, pledged his continued interest in maintaining economic cooperation between China and Nigeria, saying that China is still looking for more opportunities for partnerships. Up to September 2009, China's investment in Nigeria amounted to 11 billion US dollars in sectors such as free trade zone, energy cooperation, agricultural cooperation, manufacturing sectors, mining sectors, and infrastructure projects. Chinese investors are still looking for opportunities to get more involved in Nigeria economy, including Lagos economic development. Though Nigeria's banking sector has come under severe pressure this year, many banks have showed their continued support of the model mega city projects, despite their financial limitations. Current estimates of the finances required to meet the state's immediate infrastructure needs run into about 4.2 billion US dollars. Multi-stakeholder participation is vital to the success of any effort to boost the state's infrastructure endowment. Obviously, because of the large scope of investment in infrastructures needed to meet the state's development aspirations, the space for foreign investments to participate is wider at this particular point in time. I think, first of all, the government is going in the right direction. And I think Lagos State definitely is at the forefront of PPPs in Nigeria. I believe they're doing the right thing through the procurement process and this, this actually is the foundation for attracting not just equity capital but debt financing. So one of the things that Stanbic IBTC Bank brings to the table um, is the financial advisory aspect. It's not just a question about putting funds on the table but making sure that the deals are well structured and the deals are bankable and not only that we get participation from local banks but we're able to attract international finance. Lekki Concession Company, as you know, um, is the concessionaire responsible for the rehabilitation upgrade of Lekki Expressway. Uh, approximately 50 kilometers of road, uh, which right now is in the process of construction. There's the construction of the new toll plaza, um, very, very close to your Nero estate. It will be a 22-lane toll plaza, and that will represent our first tolling. Uh, we're right now in the process also of uh, reconfiguring and expanding the uh, first roundabout. We're fortunate with the support of our, our financial investors, uh, our shareholders, our lenders, um, especially at a time like this, you know, where there's you know, deep economic crisis all over the world, and uh, Nigeria is no exception. But we're fortunate. Uh, we secured you know, the full financing for the project, and this was last year, and that has given us a, a certain freedom. The vision has always been to focus on things that will help Nigerians improve Nigeria and using all the resources available. So essentially what Diamond Bank did was realize that look, the models for commercial banking that exist are certainly not going to be able to address the infrastructure challenges. So as part of its overall strategy, what it decided to do was to set up a separate capital arm called Diamond Capital. Approximately about a year and a half ago, the main purpose was been to develop specialists who can have the capacity and the capability to be able to pool capital and also advise the promoters. This forum was another occasion for the state government to reaffirm its commitment to working not only with its private sector, but also with the international community. Governor Fashola has made it his goal to enhance Lagos' image globally. Promoting East and West African economic cooperation, the governor was a special guest at the second Economists Business Roundtable with the government of Tanzania in Dar es Salaam. He and President Jakaya Kikwete discussed the similar problems facing both countries, such as the errant power supply systems, 
agreeing there was a need for African governments to run like big businesses, emphasizing on efficiency, competitiveness and results.